Hi, it's a new year, 2024. Looks like it's going to be an exciting year and we have some exciting news to share at Lightning Tools. We're, uh, we've entered into a partnership with a company called AxioWorks um, and specifically around a product that they provide that has a nice fit with some of our tools too. So we're gonna give you a demo of that today. Absolutely. So thank you very much, Sandy, and Happy New Year as well. Happy New Year. Um, see, <laughs> so, so SQ, uh, SQ List is the product we're going to be taking a look at. And um, if anybody knows Lightning Tools, they'll know that uh, yeah, we sort of started off in the data integration space uh, on the back of business connectivity services. And um, prior to that, actually, when it was known as the business data catalog, uh, that was around uh, the 2007 era. And uh, the business data catalog was available with Moss. Uh, at the time, so the Microsoft Office SharePoint Server, uh, 2007. And it allowed you to connect to different databases uh, that you may be using as a line of business systems uh, with inside your organization. And uh, and then using certain, uh, I guess, modules of, uh, of, of the business data catalog in order to be able to surface that, that data. So there was, um, back under the BDC realm, there was, uh, a series of different web parts. So you had things like a, a business data list web part um, and a BDC related list web part and things like that for relational tables uh, in, in the backend database. Um, and you also had uh, lookup columns and um, search integration and, and bits and pieces like that as well. And when it became BCS, um, which is business connectivity services as opposed to business data catalog, they, uh, they being Microsoft, they also introduced uh, the external list as well, which gave you really the ability to, uh, to work with that um, database content as though um, it was a, a SharePoint list. And there was a few limitations around that. Um, one of them being forms. So when you go to edit uh, a list item, in order to be able to write back to the database, you were given a very sort of basic form in order to be able to uh, to update it. Uh, and unless you had um, uh, a, a bit of luck on your hands, you're, you're always going to be meeting validation issues and things like that with the uh, the backend database itself. So that's really why this tool is a great fit. Um, business connectivity services um, is is being deprecated in in SharePoint Online. Um, so really, we want to be able to give some options for uh, anybody using SharePoint Online to be able to work with data uh, that is inside of uh, their, their line of business systems and also to be able to report on that and query it in, in, a, in a better way. Now, we at Lightning Tools already have a product called the Data Viewer, uh, which gives you really the equivalent of what you had in BCS in terms of being able to display the data in a list type format. It's, it's a modern list format, and you can also do charting with it as well. Uh, uh, so, so you can also um, you know, select your different tables, you can select different uh, views and, and so on, and, and be able to work with that data. And it's not just SQL, you can also work with uh, other data sources as well, which might be um, OData services, you could work with Excel workbooks, you could also connect to a SharePoint list if you wanted to uh, and, and display the data from that, which allows you to take a list from one site and display it in another site and, and so on. Uh, what we're doing with SQ list is a bit different to that. It's where we've actually started off with a SharePoint list. So if you've got a SharePoint list or multiple SharePoint lists that provide a solution, um, then you can take that, that data and replicate it with an SQL uh, database and that SQL database can be on premises or it can also be online. Um, so we're going to be using the um, uh, SQL Azure uh, database in, in this demo. Uh, but what we'll be able to demonstrate to you is how we can take uh, two SharePoint lists that are creating uh, a solution uh, around expenses and expense reporting and put those into SQL, which would then allow us to have uh, reporting through Power BI if we want to. You can just query it or you can integrate it into another line of business application that you happen to be using inside of your organization uh, as well. So it gives you a lot more freedom uh, over that data than if that data is just residing inside of the SharePoint list. And once we've done that, you could, if you wanted to use a data viewer to still surface that data from the SQL database, and we'll be doing that as part of the demonstration. Um, but on that subject of the form uh, inside the Excel uh, or external list, um, we can also integrate this, of course, with Lightning Forms. So the expense solution that I'm going to show you is actually a couple of different lists that have been created using Lightning Forms with customized forms. Um, so we're combining those two lists on one form, if you like, so you can do your expense report and your expense items, and then publish those out to, to SharePoint as well. That way you could take in care of all of the, the validation issues and everything that you need to take care of before it gets uh, published right back.
So, so basically, that mm -hmm. would be kind of creating a, a user front end for getting data into a SQL database, essentially. Exactly right. <laughs> yeah, you've got you've got the advantage of being inside a SharePoint for mm -hmm. yeah that that fantastic modern user experience that you've got, and also through Teams as well. Uh, if if you wanted to uh, expose the forms and the lists there, um, but yeah, we're we're collecting that data inside of SQL as well as the list. So it's not um, replacing that list to be able to just query directly from the database. It's giving near time. Um, one-way replication of that data from the SharePoint list into the SQL tables. So Great. the tool is really simple to use. Uh, what we've got here um, is SQL list open on my page. Um, we've also in the background so, here got... Sorry, so this is a Windows application, right? The SQL it's a Windows system. application. Yeah, exactly right. Uh, so you would it, typically install that on a server or workstation somewhere. Um, in the back end here is, uh, or in the browser, I've got my uh, my SQL databases, and then we've also got SharePoint uh, ready to go uh, as well. So we're going to start off in SQList, and um, you can see that there's already a, a replication set up from, uh, from an earlier example. But what we're going to do is create a brand new replication, and that being the replication from uh, a SharePoint list or lists uh, through to the uh, SQL database. So in order to get started, the first thing we do is actually create a new SharePoint connection. Now, I've already got some SharePoint connections set up, um, which we could reuse, of course. Um, but just so you can see this part of the demo, I'm going to uh, create it again. So we'll hit the um, create new connection, connection. And in here, I'm just going to call this uh, Lightning Tools demo. And uh, you'll notice that we've also got a, a table prefix. So when we're generating the uh, tables inside of SQL, it's going to have whatever we put here as the, uh, the table prefix. So um, that's a, a great way of being able to make sure that those table names are unique and, and so on. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to call this one LT underscore demo. As so, such. so each list that you replicate is going to be a, a SQL table, right? And that's it'll correct. be called the name of the SharePoint list, but with that prefix in front of it. Yep, okay. exactly right. Yeah. And then we can also take the uh, the URL to the SharePoint site. So uh, I'm just going to pop up here and, and grab my URL to that Lightning Tools sales site. And we'll drop that uh, into that box and just get rid of that uh, tailing slash there. Um, the connection details, uh, we're going to use a simple username and password, but you've got other ways of authenticating uh, if you want to. Um, what we're going to do here is just go through and add in our username. So I'm just going to, again, cheat a little bit, bit with uh, some copy and paste. OK, so we've pasted that in there. And uh, now we're just going to enter the uh, um, password uh, for that user account. And, uh, and once we've done that, uh, as we select next, you'll notice we, uh, we're connected. Um, and we can then go through and select the lists and libraries that we want to replicate into the SQL database. Or we can also um, choose ones that match certain names as well. So as you can see here, it actually allows you to um, bring across uh, commonly named lists um, and effectively merge that, that content. That's cool. Uh, mm. so, uh, so I'm going to go with this, uh, this top option uh, to select certain lists. And as we uh, display the tree view here, Notice how it's connected to that uh, site collection. We can see any subsites that we've got, and uh, we can also go through and see the lists and the libraries that are making up that uh, top level site there. So as we expand that, um, I'm going to simply go through and choose the lists that we want to work with, which is going to be my expense report and expense tracker. Mm -hmm. uh, so once I've uh, chosen those, we can choose next. And uh, the next part, uh, step four, is to create a database connection. So again, I've already got a database connection uh, working here. Uh, we're just going to go through and create a new database connection. So we can give that a name. So we're just going to call that SQ list demo. And the server name. So those are just uh, the, the that name is just kind of a friendly name, right? That you can use to identify correct. it. It can be anything. Yeah, exactly right. Um, so we're just going to go through and put in the uh, database name here. Or oh, sorry, the server name, uh, which is SQL Azure, and um, the database name. And then we're going to choose SQL Azure. Uh, notice there it was supporting also SQL on-premises. 
And then I'm going to choose how I'm going to authenticate with that. So you can use trusted authentication and or connection strings and so on uh, for this. I'm just going to use the SQL authentication. And enter my credentials in there and we can test that connection to make sure that obviously the uh, connection information is correct. Mm. OK, so we've got the uh, test connection succeeded. And now we can choose next at that point as well. So we then get to name the replication. Um, so we're going to go through and just give this a name. I'm going to call this one rep three. And um, you can see there's a couple of options as to um, when it's going to start the replication, which mm. it will do immediately uh, once we uh, we choose finish. All right, which we'll now do. Uh, so as we choose finish, um, it's made the changes to the database. And we've got uh, rep three here all configured. And if we jump down to the service monitor, uh, we should be able to see the uh, the, the replication occurring. So uh, so here in the log, yeah. um, we can see there's a, there's an entry there and, and so on. OK, so um, here in our list, uh, we've got the expense report. So just to show you that this is a customized SharePoint list in terms of it's been customized with Lightning Forms. Um, so we have got uh, things like total expenses in there, uh, which has been calculated up from an expense item sublist. Uh, we've also got a tabbed user interface and so on in order to be able to build out that expense report. Uh, so it's that information that goes into that customized uh, SharePoint list that is going to be written back to the SQL database. So what we can do now is just jump into that SQL database. And so here is SQL list demo. And we'll go into the uh, query editor here. Expand our tables. And sure enough, there's the expense report and the expense tracker. Uh, so mm -hmm. if we select the uh, top rows from that one, uh, notice how we've now got that information. We can see the uh, title column, the first name, the last name, uh, full name, et cetera. And uh, we've also got our total expenses, whether they're approved or not, and so on. Nice. Yep. So uh, so that is a, a one-way sync from SharePoint list to, uh, to the SQL table. Um, let's now go through and um, query that using the data viewer. So uh, again, um, you know, it's already in SharePoint. We could use the data viewer to connect to the list itself. Um, but the uh, the advantage that you've also got of it being in SQL is we could, of course, build a view um, and uh, we could connect to that view instead. So we're, we're able to, uh, to work with the data the way that we want or also use it with Power BI or anything else that, mm -hmm. um, of course, takes our fancy. So uh, we've got uh, data viewer here. Uh, let's go through and configure that. So we're going to change from the SharePoint list uh, through to the uh, SQL Azure. And just to point out that if you were on-prem with SQL as well, you could use a Microsoft Graph connector uh, in order to be able to get to that. Mm -hmm. um, but for SQL Azure, we can connect directly to it. Uh, we could have a grid view or a chart view. Uh, so I'm going to go with the chart view here. And um, we're then just going to drop in the server name and load the entities here, which will give me a database picker and a table and view picker as well. Uh, so we can now choose the SQList demo and in the drop down, you can see some of the configuration tables as well for SQList, uh, but also in there is the expense report and the expense tracker. Uh, so let's go with the expense report. Uh, we can now choose our columns. So I'm just gonna do a simple one, we'll choose the approved field, which is just a yes or no, and then we'll have the total expenses as well. And um, we'll build that into a pie chart, grouping by the, uh, the approved column. And uh, we can now see how many of those are approved and how many are not approved. And uh, there's chart settings and so on, where we could maybe make that 3D, mm -hmm. et cetera, and, uh, and save that out. Okay, so that's querying directly from that uh, that SQL table. Cool. 
So, um, yeah, I think SQ list is going to be a, a great option if you do have um, SharePoint lists that, uh, you know, maybe meeting view thresholds and, and things like that. Mm -hmm. You can bring that data into a, a, an SQL table, mm -hmm. uh, give that integration to uh, into the line of business systems and be able to report on it and chart it and that sort of thing um, more easily as well. Very nice. And so uh, so if people are interested, they can contact us at sales at lightningtools.com. Exactly. And you mm -hmm. can find a bit more information on the website as well. So if you go to lightningtools.com mm -hmm. under products, you're going to see the SQ list as a, as a product. So you can read a bit more about it. Uh, we've also got a webinar, uh, which is mm -hmm. going to be taking place next week. Um, so um, we'll be showing it again then and uh, hopefully being able to get into a bit more of a, of a q and A Q&A session as well mm -hmm. at the end of that that demonstration so uh, if you are interested in it that'd be a great opportunity uh we can also make a trial available as well so if you do want to trial it in your own environment um, feel free to reach out to us on that one too great all right thanks very much you're welcome sandy and uh, have a wonderful 2024 oh thanks you too bye bye, -bye.